Okay, good afternoon everyone, and thank you for being here on this last day of our conference. It is a great pleasure and an honor to introduce our last but not least uh, keynote speaker, uh, Professor Ramon del Castillo. Ramon uh, is an associate professor at the UNED, at this university, our university, and vice, and vice dean of doctoral studies and research at the Faculty of Philosophy and, Anthro and Anthropology. He teaches courses in contemporary philosophy in the BA of English Studies and Anthropology and Art History and Cultural Studies in the Master's Degree of Philosophy. His area of research is Anglo-American culture and philosophy from the end of the 19th century to the present, especially anarchism and varieties of socialism. He has written many pieces on Emerson, William James, George Santayana, and John Dewey. And he has translated works of Terry Eagleton, The Idea of Culture, and of his mentor, Frederick Jameson, Postmodernism into Spanish, and has explored the differences between American and British Marxism. His last two books are El Jardín de los Delirios, Las Ilusiones del Naturalismo, which could be roughly translated as The Garden of Delusions, The Illusions of Naturalism in Turner uh, 20, uh, 2019, a magnificent book, I must say, on the hopes and delusions of ecological urbanism and landscape design, Another book, Philosophers de Paseo, Wandering Philosophers, in Turner, 2020, on the 20th century European philosophers wandering around the ruins of nature and history. Some of his essays are Thinking Without Bannisters, The Comic Minds of William James, published in William James Studies, The Gospel of Heroism, the Gentian Mind in Routledge, 2022, this year. Gags and Games, Wittgenstein and his relation to jokes, also published in Routledge. El Jardín en Llamas, A Vueltas con Bradbury, and Fahrenheit 451, The Garden of Fire. Del Espacio Exterior al Espacio Interior, Raymond Williams y la Ciencia Ficción, From Outer to Inner Space, Raymond Williams and Science Fiction. He's a member of a current research team on artistic experiments and architectures in the Anthropocene. And among his forthcoming publications are a book about Marx's literary theory and crime novels in Conan Doyle and Chesterton. It will appear in May with a prologue by Frederick Jameson. And also a sequel of his book on naturist ideologies focused on recent discussions on the environmental crisis. From the 1990s onwards, he has regularly collaborated as a critic, commentator, and instructor in the musical and audiovisual sphere, classical radio, Baren Boinside Foundation, National Orchestra, Jan National Orchestra in the Teatro Real here in Madrid, as well as in several music festivals and music schools. And in 2008, he wrote a 17-chapters program on American composer Elliot Carter, whom he asks the last modernist, and the dialogue between European and American musical traditions. Well, being an expert in postmodern culture and being a renowned postmodern scholar, I don't know whether he would like me to say that he is a Renaissance man a real <laughs> jack of all trades in the better tradition of this term. Well, the title of his talk is The Waste, uh, the Waste Zone, Zone Urban Chronicles from Kevin Lynch to Rebecca Solnit. Hmm? Please uh, join me in welcoming Ramon del Castillo. The floor is yours. Well, good morning and thanks a lot, Antonio, for such a. Are you staying here on the table? Uh, yeah, I go. Yeah. Okay. But I can say that from here, I think so. So, thanks a lot. 
Um, thanks to all the organization and all the friends from UNED. Um, this is very special conference for me because around 20 years ago, even more, um, um, a professor from the English department knocked knocking my door and told me, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm here. He said, would you like to teach for us in the English studies area? And it was, she was Angeles de la Concha. And, and this was very important for me because I, I was from the States um, and I was around, surrounded by a very, very uh, interdisciplinary uh, atmosphere. And it was difficult in Spain to connect different areas. So thanks to this invitation, I start to work with these wonderful people. Um, I'm surprised they invite me to, to be here. So thanks a lot. Thanks to Antonio and Cristina Garrigos, Adriana, and, and, and all the staff from, the, from this area. And I, I should go there. It's a pleasure. Sense. I take that. So I'm not a Renaissance um, yeah, thing. I, I think I, I, could, I would prefer to talk as a bricoler or some chaotic uh, edit, editor. OK, thank you. Oh, my glasses. <laughs> so uh, the, the lecture, the talk is is the consequence of this chaotic uh, state of mind. Um, because this, I, 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 I start to work on such, a, such things as wastelands, ruins, and similar things around uh, six years ago. And I have the, uh, I was start also to work with architects and urban designers, ecologists, and, and very nice people. <laughs> So uh, this conference was an opportunity to develop ideas. So the good news is that this is new, and the bad news is this is new. So uh, and you, so so it's a work in progress, as everything. Um, so you you will perceive this this state of the research, and everybody. Some people told me why why zone why waste zone waste zone zone and not planet, or earth, or land, or globe. Why, why so on? So, so okay, let, let me try to explain you why so on. But the bad, news, the bad news is that I will not explain exactly why I prefer so on than the other words. Because this semantic or linguistic or um, connection, interconnection between these, all these words, earth, planet, globe, um, demands a lot of discussion about how different our perspective, if you come from economy, ecology, uh, philosophy. So globe could be a more economic term, planet could be a more geological term, earth could be a more ecological term, war could be a more philosophical term. So. Let's, let's work with Thorn, okay? And with some beers, we can discuss about this uh, preface to the, to, the, to the conference. But why Thorn? Let's see. Well, we, what, when I wrote the book, the, the, the one Thorn that I had in my mind, it was this one. And you probably know, um, you recognize this Thorn, right? is a very famous film from movies, right? From Tartovsky, uh, Stalker. And why I uh, start, uh, include this zone in the book? Because it's a very strange zone in which nature and civilization are in decline. So there, we have here not a splendor of nature recovering uh, her rights against civilization, and we don't have civilization in a good state. It could be the end of the civilization, but it could be also the beginning. So this ambiguity of the throne is part of the, is, is one of the reasons uh, because I, I, I chose a, a, a zone and not earth or the other terms. But do you remember how is the zone? We have this sort of abandonment or 
destruction, we don't know exactly. And it's, it's based, as you know, also in a science fiction uh, novel. Uh, this is one zone that I had in mind when I wrote the book. If you check the book, you will have a very interesting reflection by Slahov Zizek uh, on the zone. And this idea that we, we, we have to come to, to terms with two, two types of decline, two types of, uh, of decadence, and not with, um, with the, with the too simple idea that when civilization is, is, is declining, then nature immediately uh, um, comes back, right? So uh, it's also interesting because the phone has a lot of uh, religious and spiritual um, connotations in the movie. And this is also because zone is, 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 is an interesting term. Um, okay, you remember that. One author very important for my approach to the zone was Gov Dyer and his fabulous book, Zona, a book about a film about a journey to a room, because as you know, a room is also a very important element in Kartovsky's uh, story. Um, Dyer, by the way, wrote also White Sands, that was one of the most inspiring words for my own um, modest uh, contribution. And Yoga for People Who Can Be Bothered to Do It is a very funny book, but very serious at the same time, um, um, uh, about all, 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 um, another journey by Dyer. Well, another zone that I include in the book is this anarchic, very radical, interesting zone, is temporary autonomous zone that I um, modified with the idea of temporary autonomous green zone in the book. And you know that this was part of the book by uh, Hakim Bey. Um, and you know also this um, anarchist um, um, who also wrote um, uh, Pirate Utopias. Um, and you have the terms that I mentioned and, and with a different, I included now the adjective critical zone. Why critical zone? Well, critical zone is also a very important term for a very, very um, polemic and interesting French philosopher, which is Bruno Latour. And critical zone is a term that is demanding a collaborative um, um, research from uh, engineering, uh, ecology, and, um, and it's, it will be the small area between the, uh, the, the atmosphere and the, and, the, um, and the planet in which we um, humans are able to, to live, right, or to survive. So, so it's a very interesting thing that to, to reduce our um, conception of the world to such a skin, a, a fragile and thin and, and vulnerable um, skin of the world, right? So it is a very interesting um, uh, phone. And you have also uh, the debate about the relation of this zone with the other elements in this um, extremely important book by Dipes uh, Chadbarti. The climate, uh, the climate of history in a planetary age, um, and also another interesting thing is that, that Latour tries to make some political use of Gaia, which is another term which we could include in the in the semantic field, um, but uh, introducing some differences with respect to Lovelock's uh, original idea of Gaia. Well, but this is the prologue. This is some graphic uh, representations of the, of Latour's uh, vocabulary, and these are these are the, uh, his main books in the last last ten years: Facing Gaia, uh, Down to Earth, and, and this one who was uh, written uh, um, after the pandemic, after lockdown. This is the ex exhibition on critical zones. And this is one of his Frédéric Urtuta, uh, which is one of the best collaborators of Latour, and she's an historian of science. Um, and this is a recent research we did on buffer zone, thanks to an architect from Germany, uh, Niklas Mack, 
And buffer zones in natural uh, parks in Africa is, uh, is the way he, he invented to call some strange areas which originally were conceived as, as borders to separate uh, farmers from gorillas. And, and suddenly the surprise was that these exclusion uh, borders were colonized by the gorillas as a sort of uh, entertainment park. So what um, biologists and, and curators of the park discovered is that you cannot, um, <laughs> you cannot decide when the limit is between uh, the, the human world and the animal world. It is an, a fascinating research by Nicholas that I recommend you. It was published in Countryside, a report, uh, the fascinating um, catalog that uh, Renko, um, Renko has made for the exhibition in the Guggenheim. Um, museum in New York. Um, this is, well, this is a small gorilla. I vote for Nicholas. Um, and, and it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's something, it's an extraordinary, brilliant idea of being there, going there, being with, with the tourists, with the farmers, and discover how difficult it is to think that we can control the borders between uh, worlds. Right, the human world, the gorilla. Gorillas basically are good tourists. They like to visit the human world. So sometimes they have to rent taxis and to take the gorilla in the taxi and, and take the gorilla again into the park. So check the book, is amazing. It has a lot of information on how, how we, can, we, have, we, we have to work if we can understand this, this um, complicated world of, of borders, also wastelands, also the bastard zones, um, um, with a lot of economical implication because this area of Africa is, is, is very dense. In, 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 in there, there's a lot of people working there. There's a lot of mines, the bastard, the surroundings of the park. So, oh my God, well, this is Nicholas, by the way. Well, let's go to the background of the, of the well, more or less, we, we only make clear one word of the title. So. But let me tell you something about the background of the research. This is the book. But these are some books that we, uh, I, I, I mentioned in the book, this collection of, 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 um, of essays on destruction. Also, this book was very important for our research, and is how all the post-industrial ruins are being reconstructed in different terms as museums, but also as gardens, as you as you as gardens. And this was very polemic in my book because I, I my statement was that we have an obsession with restored things, and this obsession and anxiety restoring things it could uh, could could have political consequences uh, and that sometimes we have to preserve the empty spaces and to keep alive in some way the zones, the devastated zones, the waste zones. Um, so there was polemic in the book because the uh, official uh, ideology is that we can also restore the past in a very useful way for the present. That the past is something that we can control, we can redefine, we can rehabilitate, we can, we can manipulate easily in terms of, 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 the, of our future needs, right? And studying with the architects was very important for me when they explained me how, how many factors, how many um, dimensions have uh, their interventions in, in these post-industrial wastelands, in these post-industrial ruins, right? And if you have a walk in Madrid, through Madrid Rio, so there are, um, and we have some beers here, uh, I could tell you amazing stories about the German engineers trying to do this park and, and all the problems that they, they had. So any, any, any natural park, as, as we know, we, we say now, is usually based on some post-industrial landscape, right? And my statement was that we are... We
um, and especially two works, one about the nostalgia of for ruins and another about gardens in the United States, all gardens being restored. Um, I'm sorry. Um, and this is one of the first statement by, that I could uh, read, read. Concrete, steel, and glass building materials aren't subject to erosion and decay the way stone is. How can I move the, well, okay. I would like to move that. Maybe I destroy something, no. Okay, modernist architecture refused the return to culture uh, of culture to nature, okay? Return of culture to nature. Furthermore, the real catastrophes of the 20th century, century have mainly left rubble rather than ruins. Even if some of that rubble has lent itself quite well to beautifying representations, the age of the authentic ruin, at any rate, is over. Its genealogy can be written but it cannot be resurrected. The present is an age of preservation, restoration, and authentic remakes, all of which cancel out the idea of the authentic ring that has itself become historical. No problem. Muy bien. This is another interesting book, and um, here run Wildscapes, which is also about the nostalgia can also inspire this sense that we can um, we can resurrect um, nature islands inside the cities, the small small um, uh, kingdoms of nature, which is also also very paradoxical, right? Uh, but um, but this book explores um, how difficult it is to restore nature in this in, in, in a context of, of, of wastelands of industrial wasteland or in gentrified areas or in um, or areas urban areas um, um, with a lot of poverty right you can install these beautiful islands but the the rest of the world can be I'm, I'm sorry a sheet right so how we we install be, uh, paradises in a um, in a, in a pestilent, in a contaminated context, this is also a paradox of the of the naturalistic, of the new natural green urbanism and, and 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 other tendencies. This is Tim Andersor, which is one of the collaborators of the previous book, um, and this this sort of research to archaeologists of the contemporary past, not the the ancient past, but the, the problem is what happened 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 13 years ago, even 15 years ago, because everything, as you know, is going faster. So 15 years in urbanistic terms can be a whole, um, a whole uh, revolution. And this is was another polemic um, discussion in my book was some criticism some, uh, that I made on uh, Glenn Albrecht's um, ideas on psychological disease provoked by not not only climate change but um, but but for different uh, reasons also natural disaster and natural disaster political disaster but especially by uh, disaster provoked provoked by climate change and and one term that is was important very 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 polemic was solastalgia which proceeds from the Latin solatium and Greek root algia is like nostalgia. And let me explain briefly the difference. Uh, and that describes a form of emotional or existential distress. Uh, by, by the way, this definition is by, from Wikipedia. And, is, uh, and I liked this definition because now it's in Wikipedia. When we start to study that uh, 10 years ago, it was something some a strange word by psychologists, social psychologists. Now this is the definition in Wikipedia, and it's, good, it's a good one, it's a useful one. And I, this is because I included here, this definition. Um, I'm sorry. So this crisis a form of emotional or existential distress caused by environmental change. 
It is best described as the leaf experience of negatively perceived environmental change. A distinction can be made between solastalgia linked to distress about what is in the process of negatively perceived change and eco-anxiety linked to what ma uh, may happen in the future. So associate with the pre-traumatic -trauma stress and not with post-traumatic stress. So in other terms, uh, and this is a mix between Albrecht's and definition and, and my notes, I don't remember. Homesickness is the homesickness you have when you are still at home and your home environment is changing in ways you find distressing. So this is the key word. You are still at home. You, 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 you don't abandon home and you feel nostalgia. You, is, you have to be at home. Unfortunately, you cannot uh, abandon your home by many reasons. So it's the homesickness you, you suffer when you are still at home and your environment is changing in ways you find distressing. The environment here is not only natural environment, it can be also human environment, political environment, social environment. Huh? In many cases, this is the reference to global climate change, but more localized events such as volcanic eruptions, growth of destructive mine, meaning techniques uh, can cause substantia as well. So that's the polemic point of the definition. If you reduce the definition too much, you have a definition of a psychological disease and you disconnect the psychological problem from the political one. And this is, this is a, 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 but it's the, the joke the, 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 is that differs from nostalgia dis, distress on being absent from home, this is nostalgia, in which it refers to the distress specifically provoked by environmental change while still in a home environment. I insist on the same. Um, so many, many of the, of the psychological work on solastalgia now is much more is wider than Albrecht's um, thought. And the polemic point, I insist, is how political and social um, uh, causes are also interconnected with the environmental uh, disaster. Even, even if we talk about eruption, volcanic eruptions, the social and the political is interconnected with the, with the volcanic eruptions. And in Spain we have, uh, by the way, a recent eruption in the, uh, in the islands. And, and this is the problem, Don't do how, how we keep connected the natural and the social and how we um, uh, explore and, and recognize the interconnection between um, the two dimensions of the disaster. This is also some pioneers of uh, wasteland uh, photography. Photography is very important for, it was very important for the research and Hila Wernberger uh, in Dusseldorf uh, were uh, some of the pioneers of, uh, pioneers of, the, of the research. Um, making uh, documents um, um, and to keep uh, ruins in the in the in the state they had. This is very very strange. Ruins, uh, modern ruins, post-industrial ruins used to disappear. Why? By many reasons. Of course, economical. Uh, so it's important to have documents of the ruins because they are going to be ruins in a second sense. <laughs> they disappear immediately. So if we don't have these this testimonies, these this proofs of the ruins, ruins disappear. You know, the Coliseum in Roma uh, is still there, but the, but, but the post-industrial ruins can disappear too fast. So it's, it's important this ethnography or topography of the post-industrial uh, landscapes. And these two German uh, uh, photographers, uh, and we have this sort of, uh, um, of, of um. so of course, one of the words is coming back to the places and to check what there is now there, right? And this could be the second part of the photography. So, which is by, finally is photography on time, non, non photography on ruins, but basically is, making pictures of time and we will come back to this point and these are 
amazing pictures by there. But um, but another another element was Gordon Mataclar, artist, were very important and as and for me, especially in the in the United States, I know sometimes more, well more, a little bit more on there than in Germany. And um, and I have more information about these experiences by uh, American artists um, or, or immigrants in the States, right? But it's well known the, the, how Mataclar, what, what he tried to, do, tried to do with the ruins of apartments, of buildings, making the famous holes um, on the walls. Um, these are pictures from um, and this was the part that I, um, I was, I had more information when I started to, to, to write the, the book, right? About the wastelands between the 60s and, uh, and the 90s in, in New York, in San Francisco, in Detroit. These are the famous also houses that they cut, uh, provoking this sort of, of, uh, um, but especially Robert Smithson. Robert Smithson uh, appears in the book. Uh, I, if I could write the book again, maybe for the English edition, I could include more 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 material on Smithson. Um, and this is the, the most interesting for me uh, walk that he did a walk in New Jersey, and about uh, around these um, bridges and. Um, and what he said that it was very important for the book and for the research we, we are doing now. And is that what he said um, when, he, when he wrote about the Pasaic, um, Pasaic in New Jersey? He said that zero panorama seemed to contain rings in reverse. This is a very important concept, rings in reverse. That is, all the new construction that would eventually we build. The ruins is not something that in a future, uh, this we construct that and then the ruins will be there. No, no, it's ruins in reverse. This is the opposite of the romantic ruin because the buildings don't fall into ruin after they are built, but they rather rise as ruins before they are built. Right, this concept is very important for to understand wastelands and ruins in in, in uh, from the seventies, and it is that things are ruins from the beginning. Ruins is not a consequence of the decline or abandon or or, or destruction. We are ruins. We live. We construct ruins from the beginning, right? And this anti-romantic mise en suggests that this credited the idea of time and many other out-of-date things, that the suburbs exist without a rational past and without the big events of history. Or maybe there are a few stages, a legend and a couple of curious, but no past, just what passes for a future. A utopia means a bottom, a place where the machines are ill and the sun has turned to glass and a place where the Pasai Concrete Plan, 253 River Drive, does a good business in stone, bituminous, sand, and cement. Pasai seems full of holes compared to New York City, which seem tightly packed and solid, and those holes, in a sense, are the monumental vacancies that define without trying the memory trace of an abandoned set of futures. Such, such futures are found in great utopian films and then imitated by the summer night. The windows of city motors, auto sales proclaim the system of utopia through 1968, white track Pontiacs, executive, Van Vile, Tempest, Grand Prix, Firebase, GTO, Catalina, and Le Mans, the visual incarnation marked the end of the highway construction. This is very, very eloquent uh, um, uh, text by Robert Smithson. But the main idea that I would like to insist is this green in reverse. This is very, very uh, something that we experienced in, in Spain very, very um, recently, right? And I will tell you why. 
the idea that uh, we live among ruins, but not because for something fall into ruin after they build, they are built, but because they rise as ruins before they are built. And uh, here you have the three main sources for this uh, chapter, for this research on, on Smithson. Um, well, I have, I, we, we can pass on Reiner Byham, and it was also a very inspiring um, figure for the work, and, and especially his reflections on, 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 on the America deserta, on about the deserts, and, but let me go because, oh my. Well, this is also a very important uh, document by Camilo Jose Vergara, who is uh, from, Ch from Chile and was, one, was a, the most important photographers of the devastation of New York and Detroit in the 70s. Let's go. Uh, we can share later the pictures. Or um, Jean Jacobs was, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Kevin Lynch and Rebecca Solnit, so, but I have to mention Jean Jacobs. And, and different reeditions of the death and life of great American city. By the way, Rebecca Solnit is telling magnificently in this copy. This is uh, Jean Jacobs. Um, and this was also a very important uh, literature uh, uh, perspective when we, when, when we uh, did the, the first research. Ballard was one of my favorite writers when I was, um, when I was young. Um, uh, um, and it's very complicated. Uh, it's, it's too complex to, to come to terms with Ballard because it seems a representative of, of this cynic, cynic and, and pessimistic, uh, um, pessimistic way of seeing the future. But he said, well, I'm a very positive um, person. Why don't you say, why don't you say that? And so it's it's very it's, people associate Ballard all, also with disaster, with horror, with but but Ballard uh, offer a lot of ideas about uh, this idea that ruins are not the consequence but a, a way of being in the world, right? That the capitalism is producing uh, ruined ways of life or or or, or, or something like that. And he was a pioneer in this sense. He was, he was, for example, and this is the joke, I mean, a joke. Uh, he was in the Mediterranean Spanish coast in the 70s. He lost his wife there, his wife there in Malicante. So he was, um, he was observing the first stage of touristic, in, 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 touristic um, um, industry in Spain. And this is, he, this changed his, his mind and he wrote beautiful tales about tourism as a destructive force and the rings of tourism. And so it's very interesting, all these um, uh, tales, uh, but also uh, books as Concrete Island. Um, well, this is different, The Crystal World, I Have No Time, Terminal Beach. Um, Love Flying Aircraft is, is another tale about airports as in, in, in millionaires, for millionaires, small, small airports and the wasteland that these suburbs create, you know, um, in the, in the, as you know well, uh, South Spain particularly is the land, is the wasteland full of small um, airports and, and it's a, as a, is a terrific fantasy about people trying to escape in their, in their flight, a small aircraft from a private, uh, airport. Um, and this is one also very interesting novel by, by um, by Valor because it represents towers, towers, the wasteland, following towers, falling towers. So towers are, um, one of the, um, most important elements in, waste, in wastelands in many, many uh, tales. And as you know, now we have a movie and, and this, the movies, there's nothing and just a tower, right? A high rise. And we have this landscape also of, of um, real estate, right? 
uh, speculation, but this post-apocalyptic or pre-apocalyptic, maybe this is not the future, it's the past. And this is the, the, <laughs> the irony of Ballard's wastelands, that they represent the past and the present. We don't need just to wait. Don't wait the future, we are, we are there. This is one the tower and a, a set of towers. Okay, here you have the list of the, oh my God, at the time. And this is a Spanish case. And we have three photographers, Julia Sult Dombuk, that is a German uh, photographer, but she lives in, in Catalonia, Marfa Mania, and Christopher Marquez, Marqu Marcinkowski, that made a, a wonderful book. This is a book by, Ju by Julia, Topografia del Lucro, Modern Ruins, and is an extraordinary catalog of wasteland produced by the real estate speculation in Spain, not only the coast. If we, we, we have time after visiting the Tissenborn and Misa Museum, we could visit some wastelands in 15 minutes in Madrid, and you, you will be, well, <laughs> it's the other side, right? We have the omelette, and this is the other side of the, of the tapa, right? Uh, it's a tapa there, by the way. Um, and, and this is Julia, and this is the idea. Uh, it's a photographic inventory of abandoned speculative construction, uh, the pixel land landscape occupied by cluster and uh, incomplete buildings throughout the national territory, the recent massive implementation of leisure resort, tourism clubs, and all kinds of residential communities has not only transformed vast areas of the coast, but also taking a fruit in the interior provinces. Um, you can you can check it this information in his, in her web page. And these are the wastelands, right? The ruins of the of the speculation. Well, this is by the way, this is in I think is Marbella. Uh, but you have this. This is not Valor. This is Madrid or or Toledo or many places. This is the representation of, <laughs> of the Spanish, Spanish spiritual, yeah, the runabout nation. We are the runabout nation. By the way, Trapiello sons uh, made a book called uh, Nación Rotonda, and it's also a catalog of Rotonda. So we have the omelette, we have the tapa, and we have the runabout na wasteland. Um, abandoned, um, and these are by Feminia. Uh, okay, let's go. We have, I have a good collection, but, but you can go to the web pages. You have amazing uh, landscapes. And this is a book by Mark, extraordinary. They are bigger, yeah. But you have a lot of maps, and, the, and in the maps, thanks to the maps, you can check the, 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 where are the people, services, dates, it's, it's wonderful, they work very well. <laughs> and we have more landscapes, landscape. This is the other book, the city that never was, right? Um, okay, I have more, this is part of the book, but I have to go. This is Detroit, another, um, another modern ruin. This is not a war, well, or it was a war in another sense, but it was not a war in the sense that we, we could think. It's a software war, probably, uh, the consequences of uh, disaster. One, one th important th one thing is that we, we, if we, we, uh, we see a, an explosion at the World Trade Center collapse, that's the event. But these sort of events are uh, having time as the climate change, so they are, Suddenly, everything is destroyed. But the problem is that we we, we see more more um, maybe because we are visual animals or visual cyborgs. We, we we can perceive the event, but not the slowly destruction, right? And this is in ecological terms and social terms is very important. We have to modify our senses to perceive this slowly destruction and not to concentrate how, uh, all our sensibility on events, right? On events, look at the band, look at the band. And this is all 
psychology, social psychologists and sociologists tell you, we need tools to perceive slowly the destruction, the slow destruction, not the catastrophic, uh, apocalyptic event, right? And this is Detroit. And I have to go faster, faster. Sorry, sorry. Uh, well, this was another, uh, by the way, uh, yesterday I attended um, some sessions on McCarthy. I learned a lot, uh, but I cannot. Let's go to Kevin Lynch. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's wonderful. Uh, let's be, uh, I, I need time for that. I'm sorry. Oh, Wally, poor Wally. It's a popular culture. It's also full of, of wastelands. Poor Wally. Yeah, ordering shit. <laughs> Poor. Uh, and the landscapes you have here a lot of. And this, there's a lot of a staff of, of drafts for Wally. Check it. They're, they are amazing. All the world they create about the, this post apocalyptic uh, world. And this is, they, they are not escape writers, they are shit. It's shit. <laughs> it's the, with the form of a scraper, but it's a lot of shit. Yeah. Okay, poor Wally, let's go. What is Eva? Eva. Okay. And this is the main uh, source of uh, disasters, right? Bert Burtinsky, and as you know, he was making pictures of. Wasteland ruins, um, and is 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 amazing. Um, he's from Canada, and, and he grew up in an industrial area, and he decided to change his whole career uh, making these sort of pictures. Uh, okay, sorry for the, the the work on China is amazing, but he has a lot of a lot of pictures of, um, on. On Europe, and, and this is another source that we use, Alter, and it's a collection of the of the best photographers of the ten years making this short of, of memory of of ruins, of wastelands, of um, consequences of. And finally, Kevin Lynch. Okay, I have five minutes for Kevin Lynch. And um, okay, Kevin Lynch was very important for me because he was talking about wasting away from the 60s, and he died. But, uh, but he publishes a beautiful book, a little bit chaotic, because a collaborator had to finish the book, but very stimulating, and it was some sort of phenomenology of waste from any perspective, but particularly from the perspective of a, a urban designer, urban planner, um, but including a lot of psychology um, and, and, and a lot of, 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 of stuff. Um, only years later, Lynch were, which was more uh, important by his book on the image of the city, the book about the representation, the human representation in the city, the cartography, but the mental cartography, the social cartography of the city, by the way, he wrote this book on the other side of the pages in which he made the image of the city. He was he recycled uh, paper. <laughs> he was a pirate. and the manuscript, the draft is, is is made on the other side of the book. So you can read the book on this side, the image of the city. If you turn the page, you read uh, wasting away. This is our his book. Um, and what I like from this book is, is how he was trying to connect people to people from literature, people from social psychology, people from urbanism design, eco, uh, landscape um, architecture. Um, and I have no time to explain you why, uh, why it's so, so important to try to, 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 re, to reconnect a Lynch uh, work with, with our um, research. Um, he tr also tried to make a semantic or pragmatic or linguistic exploration about
on uh, it's not the uh, Western time that Western alive, Western and space is so different. So what is most interesting for me from Lynch's work is that idea that we we need to keep this ambiguity uh, as a productive element and not try to close immediately and to have a, a, a simple definition of, of what is a Western, uh, a waste life, a waste is probably we have different jargons to understand the different dimension, the diversity, the many, the many faces of, of, of Western, right? And this is the main, um, the main idea that, that I learned from Lynch. Uh, distinction like this, abandonment deferred from decline, which is a gradual diminution of value or vitality. Decline may lead to abandonment, but need not, not much abandonment be perceived by decline. All this mess is very important for uh, waste studies. We, that now is a discipline, whatever it means, or a set of disciplines, but, but these are uh, inheritors of, 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 of Kevin Lynch's work, and particularly this one, Culture and Waste, the creation and destruction of value. Value is another word <laughs> that immediately appears in the discussion. And what value in how many senses again? Um, well, this is another book that we're going to, and finally, Rebecca. Well, Rebecca is a master. I mean, what can one say after what Rebecca said? about landscape and ruins. She, she, she's the most, she's the most inspiring cultural critique from the, in, in the last years. So I don't feel able to, to improve what, what Solnit have said about the, 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 the contradictory relation between ruins and memory. And this is the final statement of my lecture. Um, and Rebecca has also the virtue to, she, she doesn't mind what she's doing. It doesn't matter if she's doing history, cultural history, literature, criticism, philosophy, anthropology. The, the point is I need to do, to do that. And I need to collaborate with a lot of people, I have to talk with a lot of people. This is the first uh, virtue of, of Solny. People tell me, but Rebecca, what is exactly his, her, her, her area, I mean, who cares? Who cares? And also in feminist studies, obviously, because he published also the famous book, Men Explain Things to Me, right? So she's an activist, she's a feminist, but who cares if he's an historian, a philosopher, a social anthropologist or whatever. So this is, a, this is for me the main message from, from, and especially from here in a, in a, in a faculty of humanities, we need this sort of crossing reference of interzone, right? Any zone is an interzone. So Rebecca is an interzone. It's amazing. You can uh, read Rebecca from this area and, and finally you, 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 you end in another area. So, um, and this is the, the, the I, I will concentrate the last five minutes in two books. One is a paradise built in hell, which was translated in Spain with this um, curious cover with a door and is a disaster, right? But the door is opening to some sort of, I don't know, it is very interesting, a house, a dog, a dog, the domestic uh, symbol of uh, ordinary life. Or something like that. So the, the Spanish interpretation of a, of a paradise built in hell is very interesting. Um, and the book is dedicated to five disasters, right? I, I recompose the disaster in the reverse uh, sense. Um, he ended with the Trail World Center and she began with the San Francisco earthquake. I, I, I did the, 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 the opposite. These are pictures from the World Trade Center. Um, and look what she said. In the haste to remove the hundreds of thousands of tons of wreckage 
of New York World Trade Center buildings and replace them with a newly, newly made monument, one can see a deep anxiety about what dreams commemorate, commemorate, ephemerality, vulnerability, and mutability. The singular urbanist Jane Jacobs commented that we don't know what the disaster means yet, and that is too soon to build something. The instant memorial seems part of the therapeutic language of closure that was deployed again and again in the immediate aftermath of the towers, of the towers collapse. A word that seemed to mean that meaning itself, meaning itself, come to an end, a conclusion. Rings are open to the eye, the sky, the element chains and interpretation. This beautiful combination between the problem of meaning, the problem of closure of meaning, and the problem of, of a disaster, and how to, 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 what to do with the disaster, the aftermath, right? This is, um, this is another disaster that she analyzed, it's Katrina, um, and we could have, uh, we could read amazing analysis she, she, she does. This is Mexico earthquake, uh, 1985. Uh, Right, um, Mexico. What she do in any case is to explore how the what the people did when they leave a disaster. The people, of course, also the state or the government. But what basically how people how that's how how do people react when they are living such a such a such a type of disaster. Um, and this is Halifax explosion in, in New Scotland, right? This was, I think, 1906. Um, and finally, San Francisco earthquake, which is, 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 the, is the place she's, she lives, is the place she knows better, well, also in Europe, probably. And, and this is uh, what happened in San Francisco. Um, and there is, this symbol, this is very important symbol for Rebecca. And in fact, it's the door that the Spanish editor could include, but for maybe Spanish readers, uh, they don't know what is that. This is the, the gate of the past in San Francisco, the ruin of a, of a house. Um, and, and look what the Rebecca says. Um, is a is a is a building a small construction of of, of rings as rings nothing survives except the portals of the past the neoclassical portico from a ring mansion that was transported to golden gate park where it looks more like a stage set than a relic for it notes frames foliage where where whereas once it framed a mansion entryway and then the smoldering wreck wreck of the city beyond where the mansion stood. Before and after the 96 earthquake, the portals framed no vista, opened onto no long view. It is as though only for that moment of disaster was another vision. It is a thought only for, a, for that moment of disaster was another vision, a more far seen sense of place and time open it up and the haste to reconstruct was in part haste to close that vision so the same idea perhaps that vision is the view that all ruins offer us don't close that vision they open vision they open a frame and and, and the challenge is don't close the open huh? don't close the frame keep uh, the frame open he, she also do, did this book with Susan Svart Sandsenberger, uh, Holo City. She's a photographer. But this book was the most important after the ruins on the book, on the work of Marklet, because Marklet made what he calls re-photography and is the, the art of having pictures from the same place where somebody else did it in the past. So is to make, to make a picture of a picture or to, to take the same picture from the same um, uh, place. Right? And what he did, this, this book is not exactly re-photos, re, re 
they are comparing the, the, the past and the and the and, and the actual and, and San Francisco, but his work is more important when he mix the, the past and the past and, and the present, right? He makes a picture and he includes the, the present picture in the past picture from this uh, of the same uh, place. This is Rebecca and, and and you have here on the right the original picture and the other picture. And um, okay, I'm finishing. I'm sorry. I have a staff for a paper. Yeah. And, um, and this is the last. Um, okay, five uh, five uh, sentences by Rebecca, and I, I promise I finish. That uh, nothing lasts forever is perhaps our favorite thing to forget. This is important. That nothing lasts forever is perhaps our favorite thing to forget. And forget it, forgetting is the ruin of memory. It's collapse, decay, shattering, and eventual fading away into nothingness. Paradox of ruins. They represent a kind of destruction, but they themselves can be destroyed, and with them, the memory of what was once, once, once there and what is confronted. The forces that create ruin has been plentiful in the United States, but the desire or neglect that allows the ruins to stay has been most, has been mostly absent. Final, uh, this is final. Here are the two last. Okay, I have a problem here. Okay, this is very nostalgic one, the 80s. Wow, huh? so it's a nostalgic uh, touch in the Rebecca. In the 80s, we anticipate the end of the world war. The apocalypse seemed close at hand, and the post-apocalyptic landscape was imagined as a landscape of ruins, the landscape of warriors and terminators, Mad Max, right? But the ruins lay in the present, not in the future. We were not living before ruin, but after it, after the ruin of the old cities. But ruins were our psychic landscape, liberatory spaces of abandonment and destruction. We found in the ruins a mirror for our own wildness, our own desire to locate an outside to the structures of society. I think back, and we come back, I promise is the end. I think back to that moment when the portal of the past framed not a mansion, not a garden, but a whole smoldering terrain, more tragic, but also more wide open than before or after, a long, long path between two phases as ring often are. And this is the second. That's the end. Okay, thank you, Ramon, for this enjoyable, fascinating, suggestive, and illuminating talk. I, I, I think I, I don't know whether we have time for. I'm sorry. One question. Okay. Is there any comment, any reaction, any question from the from the audience? Maybe there. Mira, mira, ah, el chat. the chat. Hi. It's Friday. <laughs> After soon. There's no question or I can't see them. Alessandra Talanchi said, oh, thank you, Alessandra. Ah, and Francisco Alvarez is a, is a Philosopher, thank thank you, Paco, for attending the lecture. Thanks a lot. So there's no questions. Just I can ask a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Larissa. Ah, uh, okay. 
It is not maybe a question as such, but a, a timely observation that uh, wherever we look at uh, some um, ways people did not take or that came to ruin, we cannot ignore that is ruined now. And I would uh, say that in the view of what is being ruined now in Ukraine uh, is a very uh, um, important actually sign of today that uh, what people are doing consciously uh, is being done uh, to ruin uh, very important ideas. And uh, I just wanted, um, uh, when I was watching whatever you were presenting, I didn't, uh, uh, couldn't keep uh, that uh, image of ruined cities from my mind. And uh, could you please comment uh, on the immediacy of ruins? Briefly, please. I don't know if I, under, the immediacy of, of ruins in, in, I don't know if I got the, if I understood. Uh, is is a question about the immediacy of of the of the ways of, of the some really know. yeah uh, i just uh, i don't want to attract uh, um uh, maybe it is uh, a more philosophical questions to some but when ruins occur in real life uh, it is difficult to look at it uh, just uh, you know philosophically in that mood of nostalgia being now uh, could you maybe uh, connect uh, your thoughts to what is happening now, political? What is happening in Ukraine, for example, or, or in other places? Yeah, I know. Uh, well, there is different. Ruins is not an absolute uh, uh, concept, right? Ruins are something that happened. Is an event. Uh, so. What I said is not that we have we, we, we have to preserve ruins as ruins, that rather than, of course, if, it, if your home is destroyed or your country is destroyed, you have to restore the basic needs. You have to restore life immediately. It's, it's not my position is not, or Rebecca is not that uh, aestheticization, something aesthetic that, that the ruins are beauty. Is the idea about what happened in two in two moments? What happened before the disaster and after the disaster? And because disasters are happening all the day in many countries or in the same country in many places. So what I, if I understand Rebecca rightly, what she is doing is that be careful with the with the anxiety to make symbol symbols so the memory the question is the memory it's not it's not only the space so of course we have to reconstruct that space because we need to live uh there again but the reconstruction of the memory is not this is not as easy as the reconstruction of of a square of a building which is a very very expensive and very very demanding but be careful with the reconstruction of the ruins of memory. This is the concept that he says. So, but it, it happened in all disasters, in all, in all, uh, in all, uh, in, in many countries and, and, and in different scales. I think the important thing is not, not, of course, is a tragedy, uh, if, if, if a word to start, but there's a lot of tragedies at the same time. So memory is, is, we have to do things with mem ruins of memory every day. And, and it's, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, um, I have problems with the dentist and it's, it's not also my best moment of the month. But we can talk later if you want it. That's right. Okay, thank you very much. Let me join in thanking Ramon for the- No, thank you to month. you. Thanks for your attention.